Sitting silently at the bottom of the world is a place of wonder, beauty, mystery, and even terror. For survival in Antarctica is impossible without a rigorous, unrelenting battle against the elements. Today's Antarctic tourist industry, however, mitigates those elements. We can now visit the continent in style and comfort and even enjoy limited outdoor excursions into this vast, pristine wilderness. I went on one of these adventure tours in 2018. In this presentation, I will discuss why I went there, how I got there, what activities I participated in, and I'll give five recommendations to those considering an Antarctic tour. Extreme places fire the imagination. My hunger for lonely, desolate landscapes grew during my years in the desert southwest United States. Visiting far-off, inhospitable Antarctica was the next logical milestone. Adding to the physical peculiarity of Antarctica was its lack of human population, government, and most of the markers of civilization. This last frontier is owned by no single country. Rather, it is administered by several under an international treaty. Penguins, other seabirds, and seals dotting the coast are the continent's only true inhabitants. Researchers and support staff numbering in the hundreds spend several months at a time on scientific installations. No one actually lives there in the normal, long-term sense. Science is happening every day on Antarctica. Teams study the penguins and other wildlife, as well as weather and climate, and the movement of glaciers. Antarctic history, with its heroism, triumph, and tragic death, comes alive in the records of Amundsen, Shackleton, Scott, and other early explorers and pole seekers. The harshness of the landscape feeds the myth and lore of Antarctica. Within the fiction category, Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft, among others, wrote darkly fantastical tales set in Antarctica, and the hollow earth legend, UFOs, and conspiracy theories haunt the seventh continent like a ghost in an old mansion. To many with an interest in science, history, or fantasy fiction, Antarctica holds an enduring appeal. I flew non-stop from the United States to Argentina, staying one night at a five-star Buenos Aires hotel in an upscale district called Recoleta. There was no choice of hotel. All tour members stayed here. I did sightseeing for a few hours. The city center was an easy walk from the hotel. The next day, I flew with the tour group to Ushuaia, nicknamed the End of the World, where the cruise ships embark for the Antarctic Peninsula. The Ocean Endeavor carries 199 passengers. It has an ice-strengthened hull, but it is not an icebreaker ship. It features a pool, his and hers saunas, fitness center, and spa and yoga classes. The optional activities on this tour included mountaineering, which could be either climbing or cross-country skiing, sea kayaking, and stand-up paddle. We boarded the ship and settled into our cabins. In one to two days, we'd be entering the Drake Passage, notorious for its rough waters. We spent days at sea before and after Antarctica. Experts delivered lectures on several topics, including photography, climate, penguins and other birds, seals, and the history of Antarctic exploration. These diversions enlivened the long days of cruising. When we reached the Antarctic Peninsula, taking photos from the deck became a much enjoyed pastime. With our first embarkation stop in sight, we were ready to step onto the soil of Antarctica. The Zodiac boat tours were included in the tour price. We made one major trip to see the penguins and another to check out icebergs. The weather was good, staying in the 30s and 40s while we were on the continent. The extra activity I had purchased was the mountaineering climbing option. The weather was ideal and allowed us three separate outings. As a regular hiker, I did not find the climbs overly strenuous. The views were stunning from our trekking fields. Despite literally being tied together with strangers, it was a one-of-a-kind adventure in the wild. The following are my five suggestions to anyone considering an Antarctic tour. Number one, save your money. I paid around $15,000 in 2018, although that was for a solo cabin. I justified it as a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Number two, don't count on internet access. I resigned myself to going without internet on the tour. Access was available for a fee, but I heard it was rather slow. 
Number three, expect seasickness. The Drake Passage is legendary for good reason. The ship's doctor handed out anti-nausea medication like candy at Halloween. Number four, follow the instructions of your tour company, especially with regard to clothing. When they say bring waterproof pants, they mean it. I bought the wrong kind and was only able to go out on excursions because the tour company had a pair I could borrow. In other words, I was lucky. Number five, bring extra photo memory. You'll probably take more photos than ever before, so remember to bring an extra SD card or two. Finally, though it comes with a steep price tag, I'd recommend Antarctic adventure tours to any outdoor enthusiast. Your memories of the lonely landscapes of that far-off seventh continent are sure to last a lifetime.